Hi, my name is Diane Tahiri. I'm the president and founder of My Breast Choice. I'm very excited today because today we have Dr. Kat Smith with us. She has her doctorate in human sexuality and she refers to herself as an entomologist. Could you explain to our viewers what that means? <laughs> yes. Thank you for having me, first of all, Diane. Um, entomology is the study of intimacy and it's, uh, it's a term that I coined. I call myself an entomologist because I'm an intimacy expert. And I chose intimacy as a focus because intimacy is the foundation for relationships. It's trust, care, respect, nurturing, affection, it's passion, and yes, it's sex. But I always say sex lasts about seven minutes. What are you doing with the rest of your time <laughs> to really connect with someone? Right. As I mentor patients, so many times the question of intimacy comes up. I wish I had the information that you're giving us at this time while I was going through my journey. Mm -hmm. But I talk to so many patients and I think, I think they're very confused about the disfigurement, I know I was, about the disfigurement that you experience with your uh, surgeries. What would you tell them along the lines of intimacy? Well, you know, it's, it's natural to feel unattractive and that you're not whole. I mean, understanding that you just lost a part of you. Mm -hmm. And first of all, your main focus was simply to survive. And it's, that's so natural. I would suggest that it's like a grieving period. You, you have to allow yourself that time to, to just grieve and to rebuild. You know, it's, it's nothing, no one, everyone's gonna be different. Every experience is gonna be different. So I, it's not right for me to say, oh, you just do step one, step two, step three. No, you, you have to look at what is going to be your new normalcy in your life and with your partner, okay? Um, because there's a lot of emotional stuff that you're going through. Okay, there's stress between you and the partner because you don't want them to feel rejected, but you, you have a tendency to just want to curl up and hide. And, you know, your self-image is going to be affected. You know, you're going to be depressed. There's going to be so many different emotions that you're going to go through, and it's okay. That's a natural process. But allow yourself the time to just open up and, and, and grieve and to go through whatever process that life is going to take you through to rebuild yourself, to, re, to get back in touch with your fem, femininity and your sexuality and, and all that makes up what you're going to blossom into. I always say, you know, you gotta look at it, you, you're, you're given a little seedling now and now you're going to grow into this beautiful flower if you nurture it and if you water it and if you give it the attention it needs. Don't shrink into yourself. Just allow yourself to blossom. Dr. Kat, many times when I mentor patients, they talk to me about the numerous surgeries that they go through. For example, if you have a mastectomy, you, you have that, you have the tissue expanders, then you have reconstruction and Finally, you have your nipples reconstructed. Many women need that. They, they're very concerned about their appearance during this time, their appearance to their, to their husband, their spouse, their partner. What, what should I tell them? What advice do you have for them? That's very important because, that, again, that's part of the emotional changes you go through once you've gotten your diagnosis and you've gone through your surgery or your treatments. I would say take them along. Take them by the hand and you learn together about what happens, what sexual changes are gonna happen, what intimacy changes are gonna happen, and what uh, physical changes that are going to happen. So the recovery is a partnership. You're both involved in it. You can then, you can learn so that there's understanding and you don't, Again, that elephant in the room thing, a lot of people don't want to talk about mm -hmm. what is happening. So bringing your partner, your lover along with you will help them to understand fully what you're going through, the mental, the emotional, physical, and the spiritual 
changes that you are going through. And that is so healing in itself because now you don't have to go over it and over it and explain you know, every little time you're feeling a certain way because they will understand. And you know, it it's, will also help you to feel that you still have that connection to them. Mm -hmm. You know, because intimacy, again, it's more than sex. It's the communication. It's all of these other wonderful things that keep you um, close and, and you feel empowered by the love that you feel from that person. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's very important. You know, yeah. we've talked about surgeries. Now I would like to talk about what if you go through chemotherapy? The medications that we have to take, they can, they can change our bodies in so many ways. And many women struggle with where they are at. Once it's all over, you have won the battle, you have finished your surgeries, you've finished all of your treatment, and now you still are struggling. What advice do you have for women at that point if they need to rekindle? You know, intimacy is just like your libido. There's many components to it, okay? And we have to understand that it's, it's like everything else. You learn as you go. So it's okay to, to just dive back in and start to really investigate what your body is feeling all over again. Because, because of the vaginal atrophy, the pain, the dryness, just all Big of these problem. different things that happen to your body, um, you need to know your options. So educate yourself. There is uh, vaginal moisturizers, there's lubricants that can help alleviate the pain um, that comes with having sex or you know, the tearing of the vagina during sex because mm -hmm. your vagina has tightened up. There's dilators that can help mm. to expand the size of the vagina so that also alleviates, alleviates some of the pain. There's prescriptions that can also uh, be given, written. That's One is a pill that can uh, adhere to the wall of the vagina and it um, releases uh, estrogen, um, uh, small doses of estrogen. And there's rings. All of these things that help also to rebuild the walls of the vagina because that has been affected by you know the treatment as well. Now all of this it comes with a note, uh, warning, because any estrogen that goes into the bloodstream is still mm -hmm. very controversial. So make sure you check with your doctor and you, you know, be very you know, aware of that because mm -hmm. you've already dealt with cancer, so you don't mm -hmm. want to just um, you know, bring more problems into the mix. But you know, exercise helps because Blood getting to our genital area is, you know, that's part of sex. And when you can mm -hmm. keep that blood flow high and, and you can just really do like Kegels, you know, hold for three times. This, this, it's the, uh, Kegel is an exercise that where you, you tighten the muscle that um, also controls the flow of urine. You know, oh, yes. so mm -hmm. when you're peeing, you know, you stop the flow of the urine. So if you can do that, hold for three seconds, then release and do that. You can do that while you're sitting watching television. No one knows you're doing it, but those exercises really help, mm -hmm. you know? So right. that's one other thing. And also invite your partner in to more intimacy by taking baths together. That is so romantic. Um, and you know, just explain what intimacy is for you. In my book, ABCs of Intimacy, I really go into what is intimacy. And this is a perfect time as you're rebuilding that relationship to understand each other thoroughly. What is affection to you? How can I show more affection? What is intimacy to you? How can I be more intimate to you? What is your idea of um, a romantic evening? You know, a lot of the breakdown of relationships is a lack of communication mm -hmm. and there's no understanding. Mm -hmm. So helping you to understand each other and then that is really, really healthy. Now, I would like to talk to the other half of the relationship. Yes. Let's talk for a moment to the husbands out there, the spouses, the partners. They go through this journey with the patient. Yes. Many times they don't know what to do. They don't know what is expected of them. They're, they're really at a loss. 
what advice would you give to the other half of the relationship? I think this is the best time to get in touch with sensuality. And then that's, that's def different from intimacy and sex. It's a component of intimacy, but sensuality, it incorporates all of the senses. Sight, sound, taste, hearing, touch, all of that. And the spiritual. So that's the sixth sense. So sensually make love to each other. And you know what? Sex doesn't always have to be penetrative, okay? Mm -hmm. There's ways that you can start to really understand what your body feels during sex that you can then control that sexual energy and you can have an orgasm just thinking about sex. Okay, <laughs> and that's yeah. beautiful in itself. Absolutely, yes. And uh, can you just imagine in a conference room and you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but no, just joking. <laughs> but truly, you can learn to really be aware of what your body uh, goes through during sex and then you can uh, use that energy to bring you pleasure. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be the pain of, of penetration. And then mm -hmm. also, you, can, you both can uh, self-pleasure in front of each other, and that's stimulating, because men are very visual. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that helps them to be mm -hmm. able to you know, re, you know, achieve an orgasm just by that. And you know, being intimate you know, is, is also just being close and feeling that you're very close. You know, I always tell my mm -hmm. couples, affection is a daily thing, you know? It should be, yes. Yes, it's a daily thing. If, if, she, if you go in for the initiation of sex and she's like, that's all you think about, you know? It's because you haven't been affectionate on a daily basis. If you set those patterns of affection Mm. then she won't think sex immediately when you touch her. She'll always go, oh, he's so wonderful. He's always touching on me. You know, just go up behind her, give a little squeeze, kiss her on the neck while she's cooking dinner or she's doing whatever, and then walk away. Don't try to poke her, <laughs> okay? <laughs> then she'll say, "This is he's a wonderful guy. He's so affectionate. Mm -hmm. And then she'll start to initiate because that's really what a lot of men, you know, complain about. She never initiates sex. Just a thought. <laughs> Cat tells it like it is. Thank you so much, Dr. Cat, for being with us today. Do you have any final thoughts? Is there anything that we didn't cover here? Any other ideas that you have for our patients out there who are looking for answers, who many times don't feel that they can talk to their doctors? What advice do you have for them? What, is your, what are your final thoughts? I would say don't allow yourself to fall into a negative pattern. Part of your healing is knowing that you have a future. Knowing that you're given a second chance to live for you, to love for you. And take that moment mm -hmm. and allow it to determine your future. How are you going to move forward and be all that you can be? You know, you've survived something amazing. So it's time for you to do everything that pleases you. Mm -hmm. You know, women have a tendency to care and to worry about others. Now it's time to kind of step back and look at life and say, okay, it's time for me to do what pleases me. What makes me happy? Look to the future and knowing that you have a future. And then that is what you're manifesting. Mm -hmm. A positive, happy, fulfilling future. I'm Dr. Kat Smith. I'm a doctor of human sexuality and I call myself an entomologist or an intimacy expert. I want you to know that intimacy is a connection. And in your rebuilding of your life after cancer, you don't want to disconnect. You want to use intimacy and the relationship that you have with your lover and others 
in your intimate circle to strengthen you, to help you go on to live the beautiful life that you deserve. And I wish you all the best.